An Iranian pop star that gained popularity for his protest anthem during the mass backlash to Masa Amini's death has been jailed in Iran. But that is not his only punishment. Along with a three year prison sentence and perhaps the funniest and most absurd punishment ever handed down by a government, Shervin Hajipur has been ordered to write an anti American song. The 27 year old Grammy Award winner was accused of inciting unrest against national security and spreading propaganda against the regime, according to a report by human rights activist news agency on Friday. He was summoned by the police in question for encouragement to protest in 2022, two days after he posted a video of himself singing his song Baraye, which translates to four on Instagram. The song became an anthem of the woman life freedom protests that were sparked by the death of 22 year old Masa Amini for showing her hair that grew into a broader movement calling for greater freedoms and even an overthrow of the government. Translated lyrics in the song included, for dancing in the alleys, for the fear when kissing, for my sister, your sister, our sisters, for changing rusted minds, for women, life freedom, for freedom. And the Iranian regime didn't like that message all too much. So Hajipur was arrested. For two years following his imprisonment, he has been barred from leaving Iran after he is even released in years from now. He's also mandated to engage in activities that quote, promote the achievements of the Islamic revolution, including compiling content on culture, science and art and producing a song about the USA's atrocities against humanity. That'll no doubt be a banger. Hajipur <laughs> <laughs> must also summarize two books on the status of women in Islam and document human rights violations by the US government over the last century. H H R A N A reported. Um, there's more to the story about the elections and all of that, but plenty to comment on here. Absurdity, absurdity. Yeah, it, like Ben said, the absurdity of the Iranian elections is also coming up. Uh, like the way that they phrase it is hilarious to the outside person because inside Iran, this might must seem at least they're trying to make it seem like grave uh, crimes, right? And they're like, no, this has to extend beyond his prison sentence. Because of the gravity of his crimes. I'm like, the gravity? The gravity of a pop song about dancing in the alleyway. It's, you're right, an unimaginable crime, <laughs> right? So, uh, but then it got funnier when they're like, among your sentence outside of prison is writing book reports, which I thought, well, it's a little bit cruel and unusual. Like, I mean, it bounds the reason. And I got to write him about some crap that the mullahs wrote? Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> So everybody does hate a book report. So that is a pretty intense. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but the, I thought the write the songs about American atrocities was funny, but not as funny as promote the achievements of the radical Islamic regime. Whew, okay, <laughs> well, how do I, how do I write a song? Yeah, that's promoting? a short meeting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's like the quickest ditty in history. <laughs> Guys, remember was it Vine that did those six, six second seconds. videos? Oh, right. Yeah, that's about that actually was very good on Vine. He, Thank he could you. Somehow make stuff happen in six seconds. Thank there you. is it's a, about my attention span. There is a Tehran Tehran's Got Talent type uh, aspect <laughs> to this too, which is yeah. you know. The song is written, it's performed, and you see the mullahs there going, mm, I don't know, <laughs> I'm not, uh, it seems a little, the middle is slow. Yeah, you know? I don't yeah. know if it promotes achievement quite enough. <laughs> okay. And they are giving the mass singer a different twist. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> <boy>. Better, better, <laughs> mass and singer. You know, definitely don't call the song an ode to the tyrannical government. That probably won't get it done. <laughs> And also, or maybe you could just do a parody of Cisco's thong song called The Wrong Song and then just straight up say a bunch of achievements, but there's a wink there at the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Akon did I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. 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 Goes, I'm sorry for all yeah. the dancing that I promoted right. and all the freedom yeah. that I promoted. I'm sorry. And then at the end, he's like, but I'm not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when the mullah goes. I love it when the mullah goes. <laughs> that wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> Okay, yeah. how about you liberate your people instead of making people write songs about how great you are? But that leads us to the left. You just talked me out of a ghostwriting job, but fair enough. <laughs> On the same day that 
Hajipur announced the punishment he'd received on Instagram. Iranians headed to the polls for the first election since those mass protests in 2022. In fact, the first parliamentary election since 2020. On the ballot were members of parliament as well as the clerics of the assembly of experts, the body in charge of selecting Iran's supreme leader. The 88 member assembly is exclusively made up of male Islamic scholars, perfectly mimicking the population at large which does not have women in it or non-Islamic scholars. Oh boy. Candidates for parliament are vetted by the Guardian Council whose members are either appointed or approved by the Supreme Leader, which sounds like an absurd title for a human being or also like a uh, special at the Burger King drive through uh, The Supreme Leader, please. They have approved a total of 15,200 candidates out of nearly 49,000 applicants to run for seats in the 290 member parliament. So not putting their thumb on the scale at all there, just approving the candidates they already agree with then saying, have at it with your free elections. Conservatives and ultra conservatives, however, were allowed through who hold, so they have diversity they in, the, two parties, <laughs> in, yeah. in the in the yeah. candidate pool. Uh, they hold 232 of the 290 seats in the 2020 parliament after reformists and, moder and moderate candidates were disqualified, just randomly, I'm sure. And, and are expected by analysts to dominate once again the conservatives and ultra conservatives. The regime was actually hoping a lot of people would turn out for these elections, believing it was a strong showing of, with a strong showing of political engagement. It would quiet claims that it has run out of legitimacy, but that unfortunately did not happen. They had to keep the polls open two hours longer than expected in hopes more would vote. And even then, just 27% turned out, much lower than I believe 42% in the last elections in large part because many Iranians didn't believe their votes would mean a damn thing. Some of the reformist candidates were disqualified again this time around, making the election a sham in the eyes of many voters. Like 21 year old from Kurdistan named Hana who said, suppose that I vote, what would it change? The elected officials do not respect their promises. As for whether the US believes these elections are legitimate, State Department spokesman Matthew Miller said, I have no expectation that Iran's elections will be free and fair. And I suspect that a great number of Iranians have no expectations those elections will be free and fair. Uh, I don't know where he's getting that idea, just on account of them choosing the candidates and then imprisoning people who say mild words against them. Other than that, it seems like a legit democratic process. Okay, so now, uh, despite that, I'm gonna trip you out here. The Iranian elections are halfway real. Now, understand that the fake part is way more important. But in that, it is actually similar to our elections. So let me explain. So when they go to vote, you can tell that it's real for because of a number of different reasons, right? Number one, voter turnout's 40%. That means you're having kind of real elections. When the voter turnout is 99%, that means it was a fake election. In North Korea, in Iraq, when Saddam was in charge, Right now in Syria with Bashar al-Assad, it'll be 99% voter turnout. And will you look at that, Bashar al-Assad won with 97% of the vote. Well, who could have seen that coming? That's a 100% fake election. And here's the second reason why the Iranian elections, when they go to vote, the important caveat, are real. Because sometimes moderates win, sometimes reformers win. So, And that is why they want you to go, and that is why the... The cleric, the top Ayatollah, is telling you, please go vote, right? Now, in this case, though, they have not allowed any moderates or any reformers. So this is a total sham election. And it's and then it's hilarious when they say, no, no, you got two options, conservative and ultra conservative. Okay. But MAGA and ultra MAGA, good luck. Yeah, exactly. So of course the fake part's way more important. And the fake part is when they select who can run. So when you go to vote, even if that vote is real, it's absurd and pointless because the real election was decided in who was allowed to run, right? So and in the past, they have allowed some people, and even those moderates aren't really moderate, they're just moderate compared to the ultra conservatives, right? But when they do, they do win, they do win. So those votes are real. But again, not at all important because it's the people who pick that make the decisions that matter, right? But then you look at other countries, the Chinese have their Politburo, the Russians used to in the old days of Soviet Union had a Politburo and what would they do? They would also have sometimes real elections and sometimes solely fake elections within the Politburo. But they would tell you who your choices are, right? So they and so they would have a real election sometimes inside the Politburo once they've eliminated to two conservative and ultra conservative, right? Um, 
And sometimes they would have fake elections where the people would vote, but it wouldn't matter at all, right? Now let's come to us while we laugh over there, and we should. I'm about to win a bet right now because I bet when Cenk started <laughs> that he was going to make this point. Go ahead, Cenk. <laughs> all right. Yes, you are right. I am going to make that point. Well, in our case, it's not the Politburo and it's not the Mullahs, it's the donors. They vet the candidates, they decide who's going to be in favor of them, the pro corporate and the ultra corporate. And then they put them in the primaries, and those are the ones you're allowed to vote for. And our media then beat down anyone in a primary that isn't either corporate or ultra corporate. And they say, oh, radicals, I, outsiders, they can't win, it's unrealistic, don't vote for them. And they eliminate everyone who would actually oppose corporate rule, which is what we have here in America. So I'm, I'm all good for making fun of the Iranian mullahs, and they're terrible, and they oppress their own people, etc. But we have a form of oppression here that is far, far more sophisticated. 100%. Yes, I don't know if I can quite cash my ticket. I had money, but I also I had money having infected the system and essentially determining our choices here in this country. But I also had, and I thought you were going to go for the fact that the Democratic National Committee, uh, the way the suppression of Bernie Sanders, uh, super delegates, that the the way that elections are manipulated here, even top of ticket elections, uh, does limit our choices in this country as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, look, I don't think it's an it's it's broadly analogous, but it's it's a, it's a limiting of choice. But it's let's face it, it's not the same kind of authoritarian choice and fascist choice that's going on. I think in some yeah, of these it's other much more sophisticated because it allows us, allows for release valves, right? So from time to time, AOC beats Joe Crowley, right. and they didn't want that. The people the people in charge because it's an amorphous group and it's the invisible hand of the market, and money moves to where it's going to acquire more power. There's no council. Like the Iranians have a literal council, right? They, the mullahs meet, they make a decision. They're like, Bob is good and Ahmed's good. Let them run, okay? Whereas our donors are, are don't meet in a smoke filled room. They just act out of self interest. So Exxon Mobil wants to go in this direction. Raytheon wants to go in this direction. They all agree on tax cuts. So what do you get? You get tax cuts, right? So that's the way that it works. And that's why our voter turnout is actually similar to Iran's. Right. It's a we hover between 40 to 50 percent, and if you ask our voters why don't you go vote, they say what's the difference? Same guy wins no matter what, you know, same type of guy. And Mark's absolutely right about the primaries too. Yeah, I wish I didn't have you know personal experience that I know you do too, Jenk, about how much the establishment in this country just does not allow outside candidates a voice. It's insane when I ran. For president, I was not able to get the DNC to reply to an email, even just to acknowledge the campaign, even just to give me the schedule of events. We had to figure it all out on our own. Um, it was we were allowed some access that we would like, kind of grind and get on our own in individual states. I had to go travel to the states and kind of like cozy up to the the heads of the Democratic Party and see if they would acknowledge me. And then you get priced out, even in that case, after a few months. So you get the illusion that you're running for a while and. Most media kept me out because I wasn't part of this corporate world, either already in power or, or a super wealthy billionaire that would keep those interests in line that immediately gets media attention. Larry King would have me on, you would have me on, a few outlets, Fox Business, so they could come debate me. But generally, the media at large would never mention my campaign, and then it disappears. And they can say, anybody can run for president. And you can, technically. Yeah. Yeah, so look, guys, uh, the whole world needs a reboot. Uh, so power has become entrenched in so many countries. It's just a different version of power, and it is and it power is always greedy, and it takes and it takes and it takes until we get a rebellion and a revolution. And hopefully, those rebellions and revolutions are peaceful. Uh, sometimes it's, it doesn't go in that direction. We certainly hope that it is here, but for sure, the Iranian people need some sort of rebellion to get rid of these guys. So not only are they Muslim fundamentalists. And the people of Iran are not fundamentalists. They're Muslim, but they're not necessarily fundamentalists. That's why they want to dance. That's why they want women to have freedom. That's why they keep rebelling yeah. over and over and over again. And they certainly want freedom. They certainly want real choice. But here in America, we also deserve real choice, freedom, and a real yeah. democracy, and often don't get one. I've had Iranian friends reach out to me and say, please be sure that when you speak about Iran, you say the Islamic Republic of Iran, because they do not speak for the people of Iran, don't say Iran as a whole, and that's a totally fair point. But you're right, it's just so corrupted in so many places around the world. 
Normally, I'm not in favor of a, of a reboot. When it comes to countries and the world order, let's give it a second try. Well, America screwed up Iran in such a big way. It's you know, go back to Mossadegh, and then <laughs> you, you've got the Shah in there, and then uh, we screw with the Shah, and then you end up where we are. It's a, I mean, let's not forget what we did to complicate and essentially destroy the lives of the Iranians. I mean, uh, I, I don't think it, it all the blame goes to America, but a hell of a lot. We really screwed up. No, no question, I'll end on this. So if you don't know, uh, we deposed basically the democratically elected leader of Iran uh, back in the 1950s and uh, they were headed in the right direction, but because he wouldn't sell the oil at the price right. that not America wanted and Britain wanted, but American and British oil companies wanted. So it's our corporate rule that destroyed their democracy, which set them on a wrong path and set us in conflict all these years. And set them backwards because 100%. people think, oh, they've always been so repressive against women. No, they no. used to be able to dress freely. They had a beautiful open society. It was that like Paris was going to Iran. It really yeah. was, and it has just gone backwards. And, yeah, and our corporate rule led to their mullah rule, and that's why we have to reboot both. Um, and good news for Americans, the way we do that is amendments, okay? So we don't have to take arms or do any of that nonsense. Wolf-pack.com, that is a group that's trying to get money out of politics so we can go back to democracy. Check them out when you get a chance. All right, let's do the next story. I just hope justice is coming, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do too. I mean, I wish there was a place that people could read about all about this. <laughs> good book, check it out.